Right. It's like a culture unto itself, the powwow. You're like in the inner circle, uh, you know, by just living from powwow to powwow. What is that like for you? Does it like restore you or do you give all your energy because you're, you know, you're representing and you're dancing? I really think of it as giving so much energy, but my mom will always say, you know, you guys are giving a lot of energy, but just by everything that you're putting out in your dance and like, your outfits but it does feel really good at the same time to see people to travel to a new place to hear the singing and the dancing because recently we learned that it's actually a healing form I realized like wow that really helped me my whole life I didn't even know like so I'm so grateful all the time now that I know what it is (laughs) it's really good good for you good for other people and you know a good way to live and plus uh at a powwow you get to connect with people from other tribes i feel like there's so much separation from reservation life and um around the country i imagine it's such a galvanization of that spirit which where else are you going to have that do you find that there is more interest in powwows um now than other years or previously definitely i mean When I've seen Pelos, like when we were younger, it was different. Like it was a time of where I feel like there was more originality because the kids didn't have like YouTube to watch or Mm -hmm. so they, it would be more unique and original, like more to the individual. Because we weren't even allowed to do any of these sort of things up until 1978, I think. No, it was illegal to have a powwow. It's yes. illegal to practice our religion, our spirituality, our ceremonies. Wow. Everything. The U.S., I don't mean to get down on that stuff, but like the U.S. tried so hard, like you said, to kind of erase the, the Native American, just everything. We weren't allowed to, you know, sing. We weren't allowed to dance. We weren't allowed our ceremonies. We weren't even, you know, all these things up until like, yeah, you're right. 1978. Yeah, 1978, the Religious Freedom Act, I think it's called. Yeah. Well, up until then, before that, we would always do these kind of in a secret way so we won't get like get caught. Because back then, when you get caught, you know, you were, you know, like fined or a long time ago, they would take certain things from you, they punish you, like all this stuff. And then yes. up until... 78 then it kind of became more public and we started having these things more open and back then too it wasn't as a much of a competition as it is now as more of just like a happy free social you know just to enjoy life and dance and sing and you know do these things and then it kind of and then as years obviously gone on evolved into what it is today and Mm -hmm. Some of it is a lot really good change and a good evolution of things. And some things, you know, some would say that they kind of miss the old ways, but, you know, it's always evolving and you can't help but just have to go along with it sometimes. So So when your spirituality was sort of deemed illegal, did that, is that when the U.S. tried to force like Christianity or the church yep. sort of into reservations? Mm-hmm that's when they were trying to like take away our language like you would be like punished for speaking your language for um having having long hair yeah it's a miracle that people stayed alive and the culture and the language stayed alive i mean it's it's really miraculous you can see how today though the opportunity for growth is here yes you know suddenly but how hard to do that (laughs) you know when you've been so depleted it's it's uh what a test um but i think like what trey what you were saying about the arts i really think the arts are such an enormous portal that make everything accessible my mother used to say the arts and food if you can feed a person (laughs) from your home and you can show them your art they are family. Really? Yep, exactly. 